Hey, what's up guys? This is Vincent and in this video we're going to take a look at Luminar Neo and see if it's uh, worth the price. Uh, right now I'm just going to give an overview of the interface and right now I'm in the catalog uh, module or catalog section of Luminar Neo similar to Lightroom's uh, library module. And then we go into the presets and edit section. I don't have any photos imported myself so I'm going to take a look at the sample photos that Luminar Neo provided. And I'm just gonna click on this. And then once you click on a photo or choose a photo, you'll be able to go to the presets and then you can apply different uh, presets to Luminar Neo. With this Luminar Neo application just being loaded up and with these sample photos, it does give you options or tutorials on how to use the software or the editing tools. And anyways, here's the editing uh, section of Luminar Neo. There's a few different uh, options you have, uh, such as the essentials, creative, uh, portrait, and so forth. Uh, one of the good things about uh, Luminar Neo is that it does have the power of adding layers, just like uh, Photoshop, which is uh, great. And then we have like the extra. So there's different applications or plugins that Luminar Neo comes with or that can be purchased separately. You also have the Marketplace and the X Membership. In the end, the, these tools like the Marketplace and X Membership is just uh, going to cost you more money. So in my opinion, just the Luminar Neo applications uh, pretty sufficient and then some of the extensions that you may uh, need. So regarding the interface itself, it's pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy to use. And one of the good things about Luminar Neo is you can start using it much faster after opening up the application compared to Lightroom. And it's especially good if you're an amateur or a new photographer. Now we'll take a look at importing photos into the Luminar library, uh, which is the catalog section that we have right here. To add photos into Luminar, you can click on the add photos button here, and then you can select the photos from the finder or windows explorer. And then you can just click on add. The way I like adding photos is just by going to my finder directly or the Windows Explorer, selecting the photos and then dragging them in. Now, once you're in Luminar Neo, you can start to selecting your favorites if you want to do that. So for example, on this landscape photo, I can set this as a favorite, click on the heart icon here. I can press the keyboard shortcut to P to select my favorites. If I want to reject the photo, I can select or press X. And if I want to undo a selection, I can press U on the keyboard uh, as a shortcut. And to view my favorites, I can just go to my favorite section right here. It's kind of like tagging your photos or using the picker tool or flagging them in Lightroom Classic. I can also go back to all of my photos, click on, double click on a photo, and then I'll be able to view the film strip. And then I'll be able to click on the heart or the a favorite uh, section or the favorite icon to select the photos. I can also reject it or I can remove the rejection. And now going back to all of the photos, let me go back to it, double click on this. I'm going to control or command A to select it, remove all my favorites or rejections. Now what I can do is I could create an album if I want. And the albums are right here. I click on this plus icon. I'll just leave it as new album five. This was the default photo that was selected. So it's automatically imported into the album. But if I want to select more photos, I can just drag it or I can click on a few photos by control or command clicking them. And then I can just drag them into the album. So the albums is similar to Lightroom collections or the folder, depending on how you want to view it. The Luminar Neo catalog, it's not as comprehensive as Lightroom Classic. It's not meant to be. Really, it's just to get your photos imported and start editing as fast as possible and start pumping out really amazing photos. So that's pretty much it for the importing photos. It's pretty uh, straightforward and easy. Luminar Neo has three generative AI tools. They're called Generase, Gen Swap, and Gen Expand. I'm not going to cover them in this video because I already have them in a, another video, so make sure to check out the uh, description. But Generase, it uh, removes objects or people from a photo. Uh, Gen Swap, 
allows you to add an image into a photo. So let's say this sky here, if I want to add a dragon or something like that, or an airplane, I would use Gen Swap and then Gen Expand. If I am increasing the crop outside of the original image, Gen Expand will fill in the uh, negative or the blank pixels with, uh, with its AI suggestion. So that's how the generative AI tools work. And just make sure to check out the video I already created on them. Now, Luminar Neo, they heavily promote their presets. Uh, let me actually choose a different photo. Go back to the catalog, double click on this, click on the presets. And then it gives like AI suggestions or whatever preset you selected uh, prior. But let me go to this. And it's suggesting like this urban style preset or this collection. And let's go take a look at some of them. Here's Old Town, Edinburgh, Toronto. I was actually raised in Toronto and uh, Melbourne. And yeah, there's a few, or quite a few uh, presets that Luminar Neo has. Let's take a look at another one, Architecture. This one might be good. And here's the other problem or one issue I don't like with Luminar Neo. They heavily promote uh, presets and uh, other tools outside of Luminar Neo for selling. So yeah, I personally, I'm not going to buy it, but if you guys want to, you guys can definitely check it out. But let me see if I can find a more appropriate uh, uh, preset for this uh, photo of Anchor Watt. Uh, let me try. Let's just see how close ups looks. Even though this is for a person, I'm going to see what it does to these statues here. Yeah, so it's not that big of a difference. There's subtle changes. Uh, usually I don't use the presets in Luminar Neo. The real power of Luminar Neo is in its edit uh, section or edit module, which we're going to check out next. So now we'll take a look at Luminar Neo and its uh, editing tools. Luminar Neo has several tools available, so I won't be able to cover everything in this video, but I'll go over a few of the basics. So with this uh, photo and anchor watt, I'll start with the develop module. Here's the lighting tools, but anyways, I'll go to the color, increase the saturation a bit, increase the vibrance, and like Lightroom, I can press the uh, backslash button to see the before. This is the before photo, and here's the after. I can also use this the before and after slider and just slide over the image. So that's a subtle change, which isn't too bad. Let me just increase the saturation a bit more and the vibrance. And I don't like this uh, blue, this blue uh, paint or marking here. So what I'll do is I will go to the erase tool here and increase the size. Just paint over this or brush over this, brush over this as well. There's a little bit of blue there and I will click on erase. So that looks, that looks a little bit better. Uh, one other thing I want to do is add a little more, add a little bit more detail or texture to this image. So I'm going to go to dramatic, increase the amount. I'll keep it at about 15. Let's see the before. And here's the after. So I added a little bit more detail or structure to the image. Now I'm going to go to, actually, let me show you this cool tool right here, this magic light. I'm not going to cover all the extensions, but this one is pretty neat. So I need to increase the intensity to use the brush size, which is a little bit finicky. Uh, but let me increase it all the way to 400. And as I just said, it's finicky. So and yep now it's at 400 i'm just going to click on this opening here and let's see the before and after here's the before and here's the after before and after so add a little bit of glow to the opening as if sunlight is coming through let me just increase the intensity and you can see the halo effect around the door or the entrance so that looks pretty cool but i'm actually going to remove this here I'm going to reset it because there's another tool that's pretty cool. Uh, it's the relight tool. And here I can increase the darkness or the light in the uh, foreground and the background. So for this one, I'll increase the foreground here. I'm just going to overcook it right now. 
to show you an example it does take a little bit of time to load and here's how the foreground looks but let me change it to something more aesthetic or acceptable and keep it at 35 and the depth will change the lighting surrounding these statues so let me give you a better example let me increase this and I'll show you the depth at 100 the depth at 50 and the depth at 0 so I think the depth at 43 is good then decrease the brightness near to about 35 let's see the before and after that looks pretty good and I can and the reason I removed the magic light is just to give you an example of how brightness far works around here let me cook it to 100 and let me decrease it to 97 negative 97 so that's the way you can play with light in luminar neo it's pretty good and i think that's the amount of editing i'll do on this photo i'm going to show you some more examples so now I'm going to go over some of the portrait features or tools here. Uh, first, I'm going to add some uh, studio light just by clicking on here, increasing the amount and make it something that looks good. I can increase the saturation if I want and change the hue, but I think the white light is fine. That looks good. I'm not going to add any bokeh. There's already bokeh at the background. Uh, the face. If I want to change the face light, which is quite similar to studio light, I can do that as well. I can slim the face, but the face looks fine. And I can also remove some of the blemishes. So I can increase the amount here to 100. Now let's see the before. And here's the after. There's no shine on this photo, so I don't think this will do too much. The skin defects. I checked this earlier, it doesn't make a big difference on this photo, so if you need to clean up more of the blemishes if you want, you would need to use the erase tool that's at the top. And body, I'm not going to do anything to the body, you can't see it, and then there's the high key if you want to use that. But going back to another portrait here, I'll show you an example of the portrait tool again. Uh, going back to the skin, increasing the amount to 100. So here's the before and here's the after, but if I click on skin defects, you'll see a little bit more improvements with the AI modeling. And here's the before and here's the after. So it removed a little bit more of the pimples or acne, but not everything. So with this skin, with the skin toning tool, you will need to use the erase tool to correct some of the blemishes a little bit more. So for example, let me say I want to remove this spot here. I can click on here, click on here, click on erase. Let's see what happens. And yeah, it looks a little bit more, more acceptable. I'm not too sure if it needs a little bit of brushing on the side here uh, because the transition doesn't look too good from my view. You may not be able to notice it, but that's how you would use the erase tool with the skin smoothening tool to remove some blemishes. So now I want to show you a couple more tools. Uh, this photo I took in Northern Patagonia in Argentina. And I'm just going to go to, let's see where it is, the creative section here. And go to this mystical lighting. And this tool here, it makes the image softer, but it gives like a nostalgic sense or a nostalgic uh, essence to the photo. So I'm just going to crank it up all the way to 100. And I'll show you the before and here's the after. But you can see there's a little bit of glow coming around the shadows here. So I'll decrease it to about 50, which looks better. Let's see how the shadows play. And I think the default will be good. And smoothness just makes the image softer. So I think the default looks pretty good. So I'll show the before again. Here's the after. Uh, let me increase it a little bit more. So it makes the image a little bit more soft. Gives it a subtle warmth to it. And now I'm going to go to the color harmony. So here you can play with quite a bit of the color. 
and you can get some interesting colors by changing the hue or the brilliance here you can make the image cooler you do got to be careful of the halo effect right here or the glow so you don't want to go too much and let me make the image cooler so you can see just by looking at the before and after here's the before here's the after this area looks a little bit more blue or darker has a little bit more saturation but i can play with it a little bit more and let me add a little bit more magenta and let me here add a little bit more blue to the photo so now it has that cool like purple look that's more obvious and let's see what happens with split color warmth so not too much here here i'm cooking the image again and here i pretty much desaturate it so right now it's a little bit oversaturated so i can decrease the warmth here making it a little bit better and i'm noticing this glow that's really bothering me so i'm going to go back to the edit section and one thing about luminar neo is like since i use the creative tool of where is it of mystical you can see it's at zero because the actual edit it's in the history section under the edits here and i'm just going to decrease the amount here and then decrease the shadows that looks a little bit better and that looks better now going back to the tool and yeah so this image looks pretty cool it's to give you an example of the creative things you can do with the other tools in luminar neo let's see the before and after with this slider here's the before and after yep looks pretty good exporting images in luminar neo is straightforward you can just go to the file menu bar and then click on export or you can click on this icon here and export it to your local hard drive or share it to a device or you can right click with your mouse on a photo and then you can click on export which will give you a few options available including changing the color space the format and making sure the quality is at 100 Luminar Neo is a standalone photography software, but if need be, you can use it as a plugin in Photoshop and Lightroom. In Photoshop, you go to Filter, scroll down to Skylum Software, and then go to Luminar Neo. It'll automatically open up the Luminar app. You'll be able to make the adjustments and re-import the photos into Photoshop automatically. The same thing applies in Lightroom Classic. You just right-click on a photo, go to Edit In, and then click Luminar Neo. When you have or when you initially install Luminar Neo, it'll automatically install the Photoshop and Lightroom plugins. You just got to make sure Lightroom and Photoshop are closed when you're installing Luminar Neo. But for most people, they're not going to be using Luminar Neo in Photoshop because Photoshop is quite the advanced editor. It'll be better suited for Lightroom Classic because Luminar Neo can do a few cool things that Lightroom Classic can't. Now the question is, is Luminar Neo worth it? I'm going to go to the Skylum website and take a look at the pricing. Luminar Neo by no means is cheap. It's pretty expensive actually in my opinion. If we look at the website of Skylum and scroll down for a perpetual license, the lifetime license of Luminar Neo is $249. It's not cheap by any means. Compared to getting a Photoshop and Lightroom subscription for a year for about $120, it's pretty much a little bit over double the price. The cheapest way to get Luminar Neo is if you subscribe to the monthly plan for two years, you'll be billed at $150, but that's still expensive since it's a, a subscription model. So my suggestion is regarding Luminar Neo and if it's worth it for you at this steep price of $249 for a lifetime plan is if you're already proficient and really good at editing in Photoshop and Lightroom then I would just stick with Lightroom and Photoshop. If you're not using Photoshop at all or you're not that advanced in Lightroom or you just need a little bit more creative editing then I would recommend going for the lifetime plan of Luminar Neo or either the two-year plan. Actually, just with the updates, it's probably better to get the two-year plan at $149 because you're always getting the latest version of Luminar Neo. And on top of that, with uh, Luminar Neo, if you do decide to buy a perpetual license, you do receive a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're unhappy with it. So it's a lot of money. 
you shouldn't be forced to, or you shouldn't be convinced to buy Luminar Neo at that price if you're already uh, proficient at uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. And if you guys enjoyed this video or do decide to buy Luminar Neo, make sure to click on the link in the description to help support this channel. And make sure to subscribe, give it a like, and follow me on Instagram. Have a good one, guys.